Well, I watched the tractor man do his video on a buzz saw where he coupled it to a tractor using a six inch or so wide belt. And I had the same stuff laying around. So I decided I was gonna do it too. So I'm gonna take this, this buzz saw right here, connect it to the three point on the tractor. We'll put a right angle drive right here and it'll buckle up here using three points. We'll lift it up, go to the wood pile and set it down. I'm thinking about just leaving it on this tractor during the firewood season. Anyway, that's what I'm going to try to do. And I want to take a minute to tell you that the Tractor Man 44 is, is a, a YouTube site you should go visit because that man's got a lot of skills. He don't own up to it, but he does. So I recommend everybody go out and watch Tractor Man 44 videos, especially the one where he's making one of these, where he's hooking it up to a tractor for his son-in-law. Anyway, that's the plan. Thought I'd tell you about the tractor first. It's a Ford Jubilee 1953. I guess it followed the 8 in. But here's the PTO. It's a 1 and a 16th, I believe. And I just took this adapter off of it. It has a little roll pin that runs through there. You just take the Allen alamites or grease certs out of it and knock that roll pin out it'll come right off so i'm going to remove all this right through here get it out of the way and i'll figure out a way to stabilize these these arms and then i've got this right angle drive right here it's in pretty good shape we'll see if we can make it all work i want to take a few minutes to talk about this buzz saw our cordwood saw. This is a supposedly a Stober 1940 version. It's got a six inch pulley on it. I think this is an inch and a half shaft and these are Babbitt bearings right here. We'll have to put oil in there constantly and keep those lubricated. What I've got to do is take this brace off right here because Right through here is where I'm going to put the three point. Let me get that real quick. So it's going to go in here like this. To tell you the truth, this this whole uh, buzz saw, I'll shift it over. I'll shift it over where this lines up with the the right angle drive. So this, this right here, may be out kind of like right here, where the uh, three point connects to it right there. And then the belt will come right through here. And uh, right up here will be the third point. So this would be the lower lifting arms and the third point would be probably across, maybe something right in here so I can put it right in here. So I gotta move this piece of angle iron to the back side to get it out of the way. And it's really weird because a lot of these bolts are square. Square heads, square nuts. So I guess that's what went on back in the 40s, 30s and 40s. And it doesn't fit well with the ratchet, or at least I haven't tried different sockets to see if anything would fit it. But I wanted to say on the firewood business, we don't really need it that, that much in Texas, you know, it just knock the chill off is all we ever say. But my grandfather on my dad's side, he loved building a fire and so do I. So I, I try to build a fire whenever I can. And so the slabs off the sawmill will be run through this 
this uh, saw right here, and I'll show you how it works in a minute, but that table just runs back and forth. You can lay it up there, and the saw will cut it perpendicular. So we're gonna use this at the sawmill, cutting hardwood to make, I don't know, 18 inch, 20 inch uh, firewood. So that's the plan. And I look forward to getting all this working and uh, being able to use it instead of using the chainsaw. I knew a guy that had a gas station in Henderson, it's full service. And after he changed the oil on the people's cars, he would take those quart cans, turn them upside down in his barrel. He had a clean barrel. And he would save the oil that was in the bottom of those cans. And he got quite a bit of oil each week doing that. So he probably didn't have to pay for oil changing in his car, at least not the oil. Anyway, I've already, already changed the oil filter in here and uh, put a new screen down here in the oil drain. There's a screen that goes around and catches debris. New screen, new cap, new, new plug, new gasket because it was leaking. So these wires are brittle, hard and brittle. I checked them with the lights off with it running. It's not sparking anywhere, so I'm going to just stay with them. And I probably have to replace the element in here in the oil cap. And I've got a new element for the oil bath air breather. So it ought to be ready to run here in a little bit. I started to, I took this off the tractor because I wanted to see. It looks like it hasn't. Had any maintenance on it in a while. So I'm gonna look in here and see what it's got. Should be something like this right here. Like I said, this is a 53 Jubilee. Looks like hardware cloth and some <laughs> some kind of filter almost like an air conditioner uses this needs to be cleaned up and I really need to get a new filter here I took this out of the air cleaner <clears throat> there's actually another one up in there but it doesn't look too bad and I've got the brand new one this is the one that's on the bottom and it'll it'll sit down in the oil bath here so we'll have to clean this out. We'll work this up in here, here. I better go clean this out. This thing is filthy. All sorts of dead critters in here. I cleaned it up a little bit. I'm gonna put a little of this really fancy Fred's motor oil in it. It's all I got. And slip it back up on here. And at some point in the future, I'm gonna pull this off, but I imagine, I imagine it's dirty up in here. This, this looks like it has a filter in it too, but it looks kind of new, so I'll pull this all off later. I'm just trying to get it running for now. It does have an oil level. You can see it right there. That's about where I got it. I pulled the tachometer out of it. It was more or less locked up. I got a brand new cable I was going to put into it, but I could tell it wasn't turning, so I took a little three-in-one oil, lubricated right here on this gear drive, and it's free now, but I feel like, 
See how the tack ticks up? I think it gets in a bind when it's turning the odometer part or the chronometer. I put the tachometer in, installed it after I oiled it. I put the tachometer cable down to the hydraulic pump that works there. And I started up and indeed it did move and believe it or not, the chronometer part rolled all, all uh, digits at the same time and the tack part just bounced all over the place. I mean, it, it kind of worked, but it's not gonna work. So I took the cable back off. So the oil's changed, oil in the breather, I pulled the plugs, um, checked them, cleaned them, gapped them, put a little never sees, put them back in there. It actually runs pretty good right now. It kind of idles. So I'm not going to start it up right now because I'm inside. Don't feel like opening the garage door. And I got to start working on the right angle drive. It's got its own set of problems there. I did check the hydraulic oil, the gear oil, hydraulic oil, and I don't really understand if there's separation between these two cavities right here. So I'm gonna see if I can find something on YouTube that'll help me. Because I add a little uh, hydraulic oil in the back. And I really didn't see the level come up. I didn't add that much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see what I can find out. But I did break, it's got like a half inch square plug on the bottom, right underneath the axle, maybe just a little forward of that. And I, broke that loose a little bit to where backed it out enough where it would drain and no water come out so I'm not going to change it. I'm, the hydraulics all it's going to do is lift this buzz saw and set it back down so it's not going to really get heavy use. In fact the, the whole tractor is not going to get heavy use. So I guess now I'll get a, I'll order the oil breather cap filter and call the engine good for now. And then I'll start working on the right angle drive and also the way I'm going to connect it to the buzz saw, the three points. And I've got the flat belt to put together and that's what's ahead of me right now. But so far so good. Well, I took the uh, PTO adapter off this overrun clutch and I found out there was an inch and sixteenth. No, it's an inch and three eighths shaft coming out. So somebody had already replaced the, the shaft, the PTO shaft. So I bought an adapter. This is inch and three eighths to inch and eighth, which is what this was. I probably should have just looked for another one of these. And then, of course, I've got to get it won't go in, but I think it's like uh, three and three quarters inch right here. It's as close as I can get it. So I found these little deals right here. These are like long spacers. My plan is to put them in here and tighten it up and see if I think it's going to handle the torque that this is going to see. So. From what I could read on the internet, this buzz saw behind me is about 15 horses. So that's 15 horses applied to this. It's spinning this way. So that means this is going to torque along with this, pushing the belt this way. And so I thought I would have to take a chain and go from here to here to handle some of that torque. But I just put one of these bolts on there a while ago with the long spacer and just one bolt seemed pretty stout. So I'm going to try four and then give it a test run. You know, if this doesn't work, I'll just have to find another one of these that has an inch and three eighths female spline there. But that's the plan and I have no idea if it's going to work. But I looked up the torque on these five sixteenths. No, these are seven sixteenths. Eight, eight grade bolts and I can put 52 foot pounds on them. They're going about an inch, inch and an eighth up into this differential right here. So they're anchored in there good. 
And if I get 52 pounds all the way around, maybe it'll be all right. But it was hard getting them in here. I'm going to tell you that right now. But I did. I'm not getting any, any twist on it whatsoever. Like I say, we'll, we'll try it just like that. See what happens.
So what, what I'm doing here is this piece right here, I'm going to install down toward the bottom of this uh, buzz saw, and that will be where the, the lifting arms hook up to these pins. And then I'm going to have to work on the third point from the top and connect up here to the top somewhere on this buzz saw from there to there. So I'm going to set this in place now. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. What this little piece of angle iron is here, a little flat bar, is I'm trying to judge the center of these two pulleys. And so basically this is like a half inch narrower than this fiber pulley here. So what I did is I just run it up here and, and I moved this over. I'm going to have to take this off the dolly here in a minute. But that way I could get my, I could judge these, these lifting arms. So what I'm going to do is just weld this big plate onto this A-frame. And then these linkages, you probably can't see them. They're going to fit like a dad. And then I'll have to do something about these arms. You know, it may just sit on the ground and, and remain stable. And then again, I may have to put some turnbuckles out there on these arms to keep it from, from going back and forth. But I, I do need some adjustment. And like I said, that third point will be mounted somewhere up here and come off here. With this, this adjustable arm right here. <clears throat> so this adjustable arm, hopefully as I push back, will tighten this belt. And... Uh, so, a little more welding. Well, I gotta weld this plate on and then come up with some way to hold it here with this. And then that'll do it. All I have to do is mend the belt, put a belt on here and then test it. Yeah, and, and this, this blade right here, I'm not so sure about this. I guess I'll stay with it for now, but I'd like to have a little bit bigger blade on there. So, one of the things I learned was, with a flashlight, I looked in here, there is three different reservoirs for oil. There's the differential and the gearbox. Both of those take the 80 weight or 90 weight gear oil. And then the one in the middle is hydraulic. And I'll go ahead and show you where each one is, just in case. Somebody's looking at this as uh, referring to an 8 in, 9 in, Ford Jubilee. So that's the filler for the uh, differential. This is the filler cap. Go back up. It's right under the seat. That's the filler cap for the hydraulic. And just to the left of the knob here. Uh, gear shift is the filler for the the uh, gearbox. Like I said, the gears and the differential is same same oil, and this is just standard old hydraulic oil. Now I'm going to show you where the drain plugs are, which I had trouble with one of the drain plugs. The uh, I guess one of the previous owners. I'm sure there's multiple. They uh, they stripped out one of them, so I had to do a little finagling under there. Okay, so so that's the gearbox drain. I mean, it looks like I need to do a little work on it. It's somebody made some kind of gasket. You see that? And it's leaking a little bit. Right, looking forward up here under the motor oil, oil, motor, the oil pan is here and that is a, a drain plug and a gasket 
and it looks like it's leaking a little bit. I probably need to tighten it. The one that was kind of uh, messed up. You can see that one right there. Had to be a little creative. I got a plug with a lot of, a lot of threads on it. So it's an, actually an adapter with a 3 8 plug in it. So this is the drain for the gearbox. Wait, let's see. That's the drain for the differential. Here's the drain for the hydraulic. And this is the drain for for the gearbox. So the gearbox drain, you know, that's directly under the gear shift. Okay, here is the um, the sight plug. You pull that plug out as you're feeling it. When oil drop, drips out of that, you're full on the gearbox. Okay, the hydraulics has a, let's see if you can see that. It's a little dipstick right there. And then on the differential, There's a plug, a side plug right here that you can pull out as you feel it and it'll drip out. So it's really not that big a deal. So I didn't really, I didn't really uh, film anything as far as filling up each reservoir or changing the oil. Most of the oil, it was fairly clean.
Well, hopefully y'all can see this. This uh, this boat right here was the, uh, I don't know if that's called a pitman arm or whatever, but it's coming off the hydraulic pump and it lifts the lower three-point leg and <clears throat> it's wore out. Which I figured that because I couldn't get it to come out. So I'm going to have to replace this, but my thought is, well, here's the deal. This right here, when I <clears throat> look at this coil, I'm just looking at it like putting a straight edge on it and seeing where it strikes this other pulley. I thought I had it more this way, but evidently, I'm not sure. It's very difficult to, to get true off this tractor. I don't know where exactly to measure from. I, I measured from the axle and all different places, and I stood back and just looked at it. But anyway, so it looks like when this is square to the tractor, this pulley is probably an inch far, too far this way. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, that the hump in this pulley right here and the hump in that pulley will keep the belt on here if it's off a little bit. But my plan is, I knocked this out to see what it looked like, but I'm gonna put this on the, the lower three point lift there. And there's a place over here under the axle that's got a little hole so I can put this in. Let me see. <clears throat> so I'm gonna install this right here. And I'm gonna put this turnbuckle on this side. So I'm going to be able to pull it by force this way. And on the other side, I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to have this trampoline spring and it's going to want to pull it that way. So when I set it on the ground, my plan is to have it going that way and I'll see how the belt looks on the pulley and adjust it back this direction as needed. Until I get it lined up. And you know what they say about the plans of man, but that's that's what I plan on doing. But so I've got to do that and I still have to put this lock this top link on. Top link and then put the belt together and we'll be ready to test it. Okay, so I found this little cable clamp, and these are 5 8 bolts. The diameter of the bolts, 5 8 That's what I need to go through that. It's a 5 8 hole in the, in the three point. So I plan on not, if I can get these out, hopefully they'll come out of this metal right here. We'll put these in as our new bolts, because the other ones, when I beat, beat them out of there, the, the threads are fine threads. I think they're 20 per inch, but they didn't, they didn't make it through the process. <clears throat> Here's what I came up with. I put some thread lock on this belt right here because I didn't want it to get too tight where this wouldn't swivel a little bit. Anyway, we'll see how that works. Okay, I got the linkages in, but I wanted to show you these bolts real quick. When you see these bolts, you think of 1953. This one's not as war as bad because, I think because it was under the linkage that gets a little oil and grease. Anyway, there's the, the right side, starboard side of the, of the tractor. Here's the left side, port. So I've been working on the, the upper point of the three points. 
here's what I come up with. I'm gonna weld this little flat iron to this side. And then I'll have a piece of angle iron on the other side to make up that connection. And I'll put a pin through there and a bolt and some pipe. This pipe will go right here like this. Well, I finally finished this upper point here. 
which is just a piece of angle iron and cut some rough ass holes through it. So hopefully that'll hold. It's pretty, pretty stout. I want to say uh, back in November, this is December here, but back in November, we went to Lindale, Texas to the Old Mill Pond and there was the Good of the Land Fest. I don't know if you can see this. Anyway, while I was there, I got to meet the essential craftsman, Scott, and his son, Nathan. And it was real interesting, and Doug and Stacy off-grid were there also. So I'm going to take y'all over there and just show you a few things real quick. What a pleasure, though. <laughs> what a pleasure. I invited him to the... Our little cabin. Yeah, <laughs> gonna, gonna show me his bell saw. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, good, good. <laughs> I never forget a saw bell. Yeah. I notice you got all your fingers. Oh, that means yes, one sir. or two things. Yes, you know what you're doing, or you haven't sawed much. <laughs> you might know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Carry on. Be careful.